Hi, and welcome to Legal Cut Pro, the Canadian entertainment law podcast. My name is Michelle Molyneux. And I'm Greg Peng. Today's podcast, we're going to be talking a little bit about contest rules. Uh, but first, a shout out to our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Ampia and its professional development team. Thanks to Jane Toogood, our audio editor. You can find her on Instagram at JJ underscore Toogood. So thank you to Ampia for all their support for this podcast. So Greg, anything new and exciting with you? Yeah, well, I have been back in Edmonton uh, from my trip to uh, the Clio Cloud Conference. And we have, as of today's recording, we have just released our interview with Eric Goldman about emojis and the law. So uh, if you're listening to this, uh, the previous episode will likely be that episode where you learn about how emojis might affect your film production if you're going to display emojis as, uh, some part, you know, on some part of your film. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'm excited to take a listen. It was I really I, fun. Oh, go, go ahead. I was going to say, I wish I could have come with you. <laughs> yeah, I think you would have had a lot of fun. It was, uh, it, it was the biggest CleoCon yet. So uh, they hold this yearly. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's a product, obviously a product-centric conference. And, you know, we talked about this before in, uh, in that uh, bonus episode. Um, but uh, it was the biggest one yet. Uh, 2000 people at the Manchester Grand Hyatt in San Diego. And it was, it was fantastic. I, uh, I love CleoCon. And obviously I have a bit of a conflict of interest, <laughs> as I described <laughs> in my last episode, but I had a blast and it was a lot of fun attending as, as media, um, getting the interviews that I did get, uh, especially the one well, both of them, I mean, I don't want to say especially one over the other, but uh, the one that we just released was definitely a lot of fun with Eric, Professor Eric Goldman of Santa Clara University School of Law talking about emojis in the law. So have a listen if you haven't already. That is awesome. So you kind of have, uh, so you have today's topic idea, Greg, if you want to maybe intro it. Yeah, sorry for nerding out on you here, Michelle, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there is a, a contest and um, ahead of the release of the newest Star Wars film, um, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, there's a build your own droid contest. Like uh, my wife found it and showed our son, our seven year old, and he wants to build his own droid to submit for this contest because the grand prize winner will get, uh, I think a trip for two and uh, all expenses paid trip to somewhere in California for the premiere, the world premiere of the movie in December. So it's a $3,000 uh, US dollar cash value or a value of a prize, which is well, with exchange rate, I don't know what it is like a million dollars Canadian or something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, and and a couple of uh, runner up, uh, smaller runner up prizes. But it it looks really fun. It's like build your own droid and submit it. So what can be the catch here? So we, <laughs> as mm -hmm. a, a lawyer, well, actually, I think it was my wife that started reading. Uh, she's not a lawyer, but she works in a, a law firm. Uh, she started reading the contest rules and regulations, and uh, there's some interesting clauses about intellectual property law. So I thought it would be well, no, it's just, this is definitely, it's entertainment, it's related to a movie, and it's, we're talking about the law in terms of what are you giving up if you submit your entry into these kinds of contests? Well, not, not these kinds, but something like this, where you have certain uh, rights assignments that you're granting to the, the contest holder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I want to do then, Michelle, is I want to play you a, uh, a recording of me and my son, um, Luca, and Aww. talking about this contest. So uh, I will play that for you right now. All right, Luca. So we're going to talk about this contest you're going to enter. Can you tell me what contest it is? Well, it's the um, Star Wars Build Your Own Droid Contest. Mm -hmm. And what did you draw here? A, um, a mine droid that launches mines. So when it launches mines, you... It lays mines, right? Not launches. No, it actually launches. Oh, it actually launches. All right. Yeah, so if you... So it's always about... Remember how it's always annoying that you cannot actually launch mines? Okay. I, The Imperials fix that problem. The, the mines hover down from the droid and dig their way in, but then they actually shoot up all the debris and cover themselves. Oh, wow. That's really neat. And so this is a hover droid, and it launches the mines. 
And what did you call it again? The hip MD? Slash hot, I mean heavy intense power mind droid. Oh, neat. Did you know that when you enter this contest that you are assigning all rights to it to the maximum extent permitted by applicable law? You're signing away all the intellectual property rights to this to Disney? What? Yeah, me too. What? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is adorable. <laughs> well, glad you liked it. <laughs> I, I have to sign the, uh, the release on Luca's behalf uh, to appear on our <laughs> podcast <laughs> for our, our uh, audience's amusement. He's so articulate. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, we're very yeah. proud of him. <laughs> yeah, and and his droid sounds very high tech. I I don't know anything about Star Wars, but well, that's okay. Uh, it <laughs> it's, um... sounds awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a mine, not mine laying droid. It's a mine launching droid. Uh, the, Empire, the Empire is a mine launching droid. So that's uh, uh, that's kind of cool. So he drew a picture of it and he actually started building a Lego model of it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he had a, he's having a lot of fun with it. Um, so, so yeah, so w- with that in mind, now let's look at the the rules, the official rules, and mm-hmm. this can be found at buildmydroidcontest.com. And there's a little button that you can click or, or or touch or tap or whatever, and you'll find the official rules, the the contest rules. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's in the rules. It references in a capitalized um, a term sponsor. So the sponsor here is ABC Inc. doing business as mm. Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. So Disney, essentially. Well, ABC, but let's, let's just call them Disney. Um, and the prize provider is different. So there's another party. Uh, Lucasfilm Limited is the prize provider. So doesn't really matter, but let's uh, just for the audience's uh, sake, uh, when I mention sponsor, we're referring to Disney slash ABC. Mm. Okay. So we're going to just solely focus on the intellectual property provisions of this, these rules and regulations of this contest. Uh, we'll, we'll ignore other legal issues such as any kind of gaming issues or competition act, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But just know that it is open to residents of the United States and open to Canada and other countries as well to enter. Actually, in Canada, excluding Quebec because there's special things about Quebec that they don't want to <laughs> deal mm-hmm. with. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so ignoring all that, if we go to these rules, um, and I'll, we'll put a link to this in the show notes, and we scroll down to uh, eight. So this is what I was <laughs> referring to when I was talking to my son, is the assignment <laughs> of rights. So we go to 8A, assignment of rights, all entrants, excluding French entrants, as in France, because there's other rules for, for um, or residents of France who are entering, to the maximum extent permitted by applicable law in consideration for the chance to enter this promotion. So in consideration, if you know contract law, so that's the exchange a promise there to make this a binding contract in consideration for the chance to enter this promotion and the provision of a prize each prize winner in this promotion hereby irrevocably and unconditionally assigns to sponsor absolutely with full title guarantee and free from encumbrances including by way of present assignment of present and future copyright all intellectual property rights as defined below and all other rights of whatever nature in and to his slash her prototype. And the prototype is the droid design. Whew. So yeah, so uh, it's interesting. It says here is that in consideration for the chance to enter each prize winner. So I was a little bit wrong when I uh, told my son that, well, just by entering, you're assigning away all your rights. Here is that you have to, you, you're a prize winner. That, that's mm-hmm. when you assign away I guess the, um, the the design to mm-hmm. uh, the, the prize holder here. Mm-hmm. All right. If you are a winner, even if you're just winning the posters, running up, up prizes, you're assigning to the Disney slash ABC all rights to your design. Okay. So that's number wow. one. Yeah. Next is the rights of publicity. So this is where it gets interesting. Okay. So that's, that's not so bad. So only if you win, do you assign away these rights uh, to your, you, to your design. But then we look at, Sub 9 or Article 9 publicity without affecting any of the rights granted in Section 8, 
by entering this promotion. So just by entering the promotion, each entrant, so not just winner here, each entrant agrees that whether or not he slash she wins a prize, sponsor will be, shall be entitled, but not obligated to use his or her name and prototype in all forms of media for publicity purposes in connection with this promotion without compensation except where prohibited by law. Such rights include, without limitation, the right to publish the entrance prototype on sponsor's website and social media channels in connection with the promotion. And then if there, there's uh, further conditions if you actually win that uh, you can, you know, you're agreeing to publish biographical information and photos and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. Wow. So <laughs> even by entering, so you may not be assigning away the rights to your design if you're not a winner. But you do mm-hmm. agree to these uh, that everyone can see your design and that they could publish it uh, for, for whatever reason or for promotional purposes for this contest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So another interesting part I thought is what's, what can they use it for? Okay, so mm-hmm. the, in the, uh, on the website, there's a nice video with uh, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, and uh, Mark Hamill talking about you know, promoting this contest. And uh, the main hook here is that if you're the winner, the grand prize winner, they'll use your droid, your design in a Star Wars project, some future Star Wars project. Okay, wow, so, so that's great. Huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, that's pretty awesome, right? Mm-hmm. So what is this Star Wars project, though? So does it define Star Wars project? And unfortunately, you know, r- rules and regulations of this contest don't define what is a Star Wars project. So it could be mm. a future movie. It could be in one of the upcoming uh, Star Wars the TV, new TV series, like the, the Mandalorian or uh, the new Obi-Wan series. Or it could be a two-minute Star Wars YouTube video or a video game or something like that. So it doesn't actually define. So they give them, they're giving themselves as much, I guess, latitude or flexibility to mm-hmm. decide which Star Wars project because they don't, they don't define what that project will be or even tell you like it will be, a, it will be a motion picture or, or it'll be a TV or a motion picture. So it could be anything, any one of their projects, at least oh. from what I've read here. So, so yeah, actually, uh, the, the wording is interesting. So under Article 14, for the building of the droid portion of the grand prize, sponsor in its sole discretion will determine which Star Wars project the entry will be included in. The exact method and context of incorporation and the duration of on-screen use of the grand prize winner's entry shall be at the sponsor's sole discretion, but shall be no less than three seconds. Sponsor may alter the design color, size, and other characteristics of the grand prize winner's entry as it deems fit and in its sole discretion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, wow. So basically they can change it completely and show it for three seconds on a YouTube video. (laughs) Yes, that's right. Yeah. If if that is the star Wars project that Mm. they choose to show it on. Right. Oh, and here's a little bit further here without limiting the foregoing grand prize winner shall have no right of review or approval of the entry as it appears in the star Wars project. Oh. Yeah. So they can completely just turn upside down and just take the, the bare minimum kind of, kind of shape mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and completely change it. And, you know, if I were writing these r- rules, uh, mm-hmm. this, this, this contract for uh, Disney, and I, I would be so lucky to have them as a client, I would probably write it like this as well. This is really well written for, to protect and give your client your Disney or ABC, the maximum flexibility they can have in using the winner. Mm -hmm. Because they have no, like, it can be anything. It could be like just a a pencil sketch or something like that. So this also gives an ability to to, to render it and to to, to color it and and all sorts of stuff, right? So for their interest, they need these rights to make all these changes um, at their sole discretion and, but abiding by, you know, like three seconds at the very least we will, uh, show this at three seconds, but it could be in the background. <laughs> it could well, be a, 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 amongst an army of droids, and this could be like one of the like a thousand on the field or something like that. Uh, well, I think when they get Luca's submission, I think that they're going to decide that it's such an awesome droid that there just needs to be a whole movie about it. I, okay. I, I agree, Michelle. Yeah. Yes, well, let's, <laughs> let's make that pitch. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the, the, there's a lesson in the end is essentially read <laughs> when you're submitting something and it's, it's for something that with, with a big hook like this uh, contest, then read the rules, right? Read, mm-hmm. read the, the, essentially it's the 
not essentially, it's this is the contract that you are legally bound by if you are submitting a design or, or something uh, for a contest. So you better read these and understand uh, what uh, you uh, may be giving up or and what the, the permissions are you're giving to the contest holder. Mm -hmm. It seems especially important for creative people because maybe, you know, part of your idea that you submit in the contest that then you're giving away your rights to is something that you would want to use later in one of your own projects. And that's right. Exactly. And here uh, I had uh, the, my first reading was I, I misread it. I thought that, well, just by merely submitting, then you're assigning over all IP to your design. But it's only the winners that do that. But still, mm -hmm. like they give themselves that license or that permission to you know, publicly display your design for everyone to see. Right. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, if it's one of those things you want to hold close to your chest, then you might not want to do this because it because it could it, uh, or maybe you do. Maybe it just looks so awesome that uh, maybe this will gain you some publicity or something like that, right? So That's true. So the question is, now knowing this, is Luca still going to enter? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay so. with his, yeah. uh, his, what is it, heavy impact? Oh, man, yeah, yeah. Launching mine droid? Yeah, something like that, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you got it, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, something that's exciting for him to you know, design a droid, and uh, mm. you know, well, I mean, you know, the chances of of him actually winning, uh, like, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, it's at least a, f a very fun activity for a kid to uh, to participate in. Yeah, that's really exciting. I think it's awesome too to uh, be able to inspire creativity at such a young age like that. Exactly, and that's all I have for this. Uh, a contest and again it's at buildmydroidcontest.com and the deadline is november 13th by midnight pacific time and, and i'm not sure if that's pacific standard time or pacific daylight time but anyway pacific time i'm guessing california time so november 13 midnight uh california time is when you have is your deadline to submit your droid design if you wish to do so and if any of our listeners end up winning and they want to bring us along for the grand prize, I, I think we would be open to attending. <laughs> I would be open to that too. Yeah. yeah. It would be my first Star Wars movie. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that would be awesome. Actually, you'd have to, you know what you'd have to do? Hmm. It, it's kind of hard to watch this movie as your first Star Wars movie. So I oh. would suggest if you, do indeed want to watch this you have to watch i think you have to watch all the other movies actually to get it you know this is like this will be like picking up a novel and opening up to chapter 12 of 12 and just reading it from there if you oh. were to. <laughs> you're just saying this because you want to be the one who gets to go with the grand prize winner <laughs> Well, no, no, I, I'm trying to um, uh, counsel you into <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, maximizing sure. your enjoyment. <laughs> Although, how many movies do I have to watch? How many are there? There are the original trilogy, so those three, and then there's okay. the prequels, the other three, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's the two latest movies. I mean, there, there are more movies, but I think those ones, I think you should probably... No, you should watch at the very least the original trilogy and the last two movies um, because that, this, that's the latest trilogy then. So uh, that would be a minimum of five movies, at least in my opinion, that, uh, to, to be able to get what's going on. But mm -hmm. maybe you could just watch it and just watch the explosions and, and, be, you know, and just have fun anyway and maybe have someone fill you in on the story afterward. That might work too. Yeah, I want to go on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of our listeners to win. <laughs> although, although, <Poor> Luca. <laughs> yes, <laughs> although uh, a related genre, but not the same is, uh, you know, the, the latest Avengers movie, uh, Endgame and Infinity War. Mm -hmm. I heard of it. Yeah. So <laughs> at the office, one of the paralegals, she went with her husband to go see uh, Avengers Infinity War. Uh, this was last year. I think it was last year or the year before, I forget. And she had, her and her husband had not seen any of the Avengers, any of the MCU movies before that. Like, mm -hmm. none of them. And they were pissed off because they didn't know what was going on. And, oh, no. And, all, and I don't think this is, this is a spoiler anymore because it's been out for so long. And, and, like, a lot of the people die. 
right? So they were they were mad oh. that that this is how a, a movie ended. They don't like to watch a movie that ends like that. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's like you picked up a novel, like I just mentioned to you, but this time you opened it at chapter 11, not mm-hmm. knowing anything about chapters 1 to 10 and not even knowing that there's a chapter 12. Oh, so, so maybe so- they come back? <laughs> and that's where you have to watch it, right? I, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for you if you do end up watching it. But <laughs> okay. it's one of those things that all that character develops. So for them, it just looks like a, a bunch of fight scenes and explosions, right? So they didn't have mm. any of the background, any of the character development. So it's tough when you're watching a movie where it's, it's, uh, I guess, um, somewhat serialized like that, where mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, you have to watch at least several hours of the content beforehand to get what's going on. But then mm. again, I, I actually talked to someone who watched the, the very latest one end game and uh, he or she said that they enjoyed it a lot you know even though they oh. didn't know what's going on because it was a lot of fun I'm like oh okay mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't think that you would be able to enjoy that uh, movie without uh, um all the other watching at least a few of the other movies to, to for some of the background mm-hmm. well it sounds like i have a lot of movies to catch up on <laughs> uh, yeah you know if, if you really want or you can just watch you know the, the new one just for the sake of just for the sake of having something fun and special effects and stuff and having, mm. yeah, just being along for the ride kind of thing. Right. So you don't have to, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to know what's going on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's like a large portion of my life. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we a lot to unpack there, Michelle. <laughs> 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 I think that's all I have for today, Greg. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> so let's sign off. Uh, Michelle, where can, they, uh, where can people find you? Where can they find us? They can find us on Instagram at Legal Cut Pro. And you can find me on Instagram at Michelle Molyneux. And you can find me on Twitter at Cyclos, C-Y-C-L-A-W. And you can find our website link is at LegalCutPro.com. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Greg. And thank you guys for listening today. We'll see you next time. And like we said last time, we have some very exciting content coming at you. Uh, Michelle, you've been working very hard uh, Mm. on it uh, about uh, (laughs) something related to droids. Drones. Drones in film use and the law. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be good. Legal Cut Pro has been produced by Greg Pang and Michelle Molyneux. Excerpts of Just Say Go, Dr. Octavio Mendicity, mixed courtesy of Dr. Octavio and Michelle Molyneux. This podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. Nothing stated on it is to be construed as legal advice. The views expressed by the hosts of Legal Cut Pro and any guests are their own and do not represent the opinions of any organization or other person unless otherwise stated. Intro sound clip film projector countdown has been truncated from its original form and is copyright 2013 Ivan Gabovich used under creative commons by3 license outro sound clip film projector reel runs out by stefan021 is used under creative commons cc01.0 license this podcast is copyright of red frame law and is licensed to you under creative commons attribution non-commercial cc bync 4.0 license for details of that license visit creativecommons.org <laughs>